What is going on, my fellow shenanigans? It is Ajax back once again with more Rattle Can Shenanigans. And in this video, we're doing the final reveal of the Old Goat group build. Hosted by Lucas C over at Lucas C's Model Car Hobby Headquarters. This, uh, this, I'll, I'll be honest, this was not a, uh, a fun build. It just wasn't. Um, I can appreciate what this study did, but honestly, this kit is hot garbage and people claiming otherwise or saying something silly like, it's not about the kit, it's about the builder, they're, they're pretty much delusional because this this is a bad kit any way you slice it. I did my best on it to put together a worthwhile submission. I mean, you guys have already seen like what what color it is and everything, so I'll put the final up here real quick and probably rant some more, but yeah, I gotta be honest, I'm glad it's over. I just, I wish, uh, I wish it had been a better kit. So I will be right back with the actual final review. All right, and there it is, the MPC 1967 Pontiac GTO, all finished and ready for its big reveal. Um, to recap, because I think I talked about it in the last video, but since I'm not sitting in front of my computer, I don't know for certain. I'll recap nevertheless. Uh, this was primarily a rattle can paint job. I used uh, Tamiya's TS87 titanium gold for the, uh, the gold body color that you see here. And then the interior was sprayed with TS46 light sand. Uh, I'll give you a shot of the interior that I took before I put it together, uh, where I show you the, uh, the detail that I did on the dash and the center console. But one of the things I also did was used uh, embossing powder to, uh, to simulate the carpet. Uh, as you can see here, it's, it's pretty much box stock, just a, uh, just a boilerplate build. It, uh, it came together, um, it came together particularly well. A um, couple things of note uh, uh, around the back. Yeah, I've got my custom uh, license plate on it. I did remove the Pontiac uh, emblems there, or not Pontiac emblem, but the Pontiac script on the uh, the, the rear deck there um, to make it look more like a GTO. I covered up the 1967 license plate up front because I've never been a big fan of those pre-stamped license plates. Um, I used, uh, yeah, as you can see, I used bare metal foil and the tires that I've got, those uh, red line tires were actually from a different vintage, a different reissue of this kit. And we will talk about that here in just a moment. But to cover the rest of things, let me take the hood off here. Uh, under the hood, of course, we've got a, uh, a bit of engine detail and I'll pick it up, try and bring it a little bit closer so you guys can get a better look. The, uh, the anemic power plant that is there, which I'm told is representative of the, uh, the GTO's uh, engine, but it's out of scale, entirely out of scale. Too uh, much too small, that engine bay looks uh, entirely cavernous. It's just not a good look, but you can see in there, I detailed it. The one addition that I did make to this otherwise box stock build is this, uh, this cover here. I built this because I didn't like the way that the radiator wall was just open versus the front grill and that there wasn't any kind of like support outside of what was, you know, part of the annual, uh, that this, this model was based on overall. I just felt it. It, it didn't look good, um, and I, even though I was building this as box stock as I uh, as I dared, I didn't want to have that other bit looking at me there. So yeah, we fabbed together, uh, scratch built a uh, a cover to put over the uh, the rad wall, and there uh, there it is. Um, last little bit, let me flip it over. You guys can show you the uh, the underbody. You can see that it's very much the uh, you know just a typical uh, uh, MPC. Uh, underbody there it was a hot rod gray primer and uh, a black um, black chassis with uh, a black wash over it that was uh, that was pretty much all she wrote for uh, for this 
yeah, yeah, there, there it is. The kit is in fact buildable um, straight out the box, but it is not buildable without a whole bunch of, uh, of intervention. And I think that's part of my biggest issue with the stuff that I've read and seen go back and forth in Lucas E's uh, Facebook page. Guys who always kind of carry on about how people, they'll buy a kit and when they complain about the quality of the kit, the common refrain is, it's not the kit, it's the builder. If you were a better builder, then you wouldn't have problems with the kit. And I, I don't think that's fair. I, I really don't. Because there are some folks who just want to sit down and build. If somebody isn't well-versed or isn't like familiar with the history of the product, then yeah, they're going to have a really, really bad time. And honestly, like we're here to enjoy this hobby. So if you just want to pick this up and like sit down and enjoy building a kit, then this isn't the kit for you and that's okay. Um, but at the same time, if you want to defend this kit and say that like, oh, well, there's nothing wrong with the kit. It's just old. You need to suck it up and deal with it. I, I would say that maybe this isn't the hill to die on. I, I can give you, I can give you some credence with some kits, but after having built this one box stock and having corrected all the bits that I corrected, I know for a fact that if I hadn't done research on this, this build prior, if I hadn't had an understanding or history of what this kit has gone through, the many iterations that MPC has produced, and all of the, we'll say, idiosyncrasies of the various releases over the years, this would have been an exercise in frustration. And I totally would have understood why, you know, people would have gone to a, uh, a forum or gone to social media to complain about their, their $30 purchase. I, I would have done the same thing if I had gone in blind. So all that to say, like, maybe give some of the people who are complaining about these kits a break. Moving on, though, um, I built this, and as you saw in my last video, I had some extra parts, extra pieces, and a different direction I was going to go in. And I'll be honest with you, at first, I wasn't going to build this box stock at all. And the reason why I wasn't going to build a box stock is, like, we've just covered or just I just covered in the uh the truncated rant that I probably provided you just uh you know here prior but when I was looking at what Luca was trying to accomplish with this particular group build I decided that maybe replacing everything except for the body of the kit with aftermarket parts or other uh other variations of the kit probably was missing the point. So I decided to do a, uh, a box stock build and, um, you know, make something of it. And I'm sure that, you know, there are plenty out there who are looking at it and said, I hey, didn't come out half bad. Yeah, it is the, uh, it isn't the kit. It's the builder after all. And it's like, no, 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 no. That's missing the point. Um, the, the kit still sucked. And there was still a lot that I had to, uh, uh, I had to learn and uh, avoid. So, yeah, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to accept that at all because yeah, out of the box without any, uh, forewarning, then yeah, this would have been an absolute nightmare, but enough of me covering the same ground at infinitum. Let me show you what else I did because once I finished this and I realized that I had a, another copy of the kit, we, uh, we, we kind of went after it. I'll be right back. 